What's cracking everyone? My name is Mark and today I'm going to present to you something different and that's a radio interview. Zeno Radio got in contact with me and they said, Mark, we want to put you on the breakfast show and that's what's going to happen in 10 minutes time as of now. And the topic is staying fit in the capital city. Capital city, we're talking about London and I have actually no idea what they're going to be asking me. The interview is around 10 minutes long. I mean, it's probably going to be shorter, but yeah, I wanted you guys to listen in and see how I do on a live sort of radio show and I'm, you know, I'm not prepared. I don't know the question, so this is going to be very interesting. Stay tuned. Through the wastelands, through the there you go. The call is coming in. Hello? Hi, is that Mark? Yes, it is. Uh, how you doing, Mark? It's Jerry here from the radio station. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? Yeah, excellent. Uh, there's news today, right? It's come out saying that kids in Britain at age seven are stopping exercising. That's when they start the tailor off. Yes. Um, so if that's what I'm talking about. When I bring you in, I'll, I'll treat it as if we've got you on the line because there's a new story about it. Sure. Good morning, 10.35 on the clock. It's your Tuesday and you're probably thinking, oh, I wish the weekend was here. I wish I could lie on the couch, sit down, relax, and, you know, wait for Monday to roll around again. Well, maybe some of us are thinking that. In today's society, I think we'd probably go half and half, though. Half of us are thinking, Tuesday, great, I can get out. It's going to be sunny this afternoon. and Get out, go for a run, stay fit, stay active, stay healthy. That's my opinion on it. And I'm going to ask a specialist in just a moment's time about that. Why is it that some of us seem to be so driven by protein shakes and staying fit and, and looking good in the mirror, and the others just seem to taper away? Today of all days was the day I wanted to talk to him because the British Journal of Sports Medicine has come out this morning saying that age seven, yes, age seven, British kids seem to be tapering off exercise. And then again at nine, 11, 13, those are the ages they looked at, and we just need to do less and less and less, which means it's not even adolescence. It's not when we're teenagers we start to get lazy. It's earlier than that. It's a bit scary, isn't it? Someone who's certainly not lazy, and our specialist for the morning, he believes in staying fit in the city, and it's possible. Well, he can prove it's possible. It's Mark Dresser. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Yeah, great, thanks. Now, just tell us what you do, for instance. Now, you officially call a personal trainer, but a lot more people know and follow you. What is it you do day to day for a job? Um, well, I'm a personal trainer, so meaning I train people one-to-one -one in terms of fitness, um, health, nutrition, I give advice and take sort of a holistic approach, meaning if someone comes to me and says, you know, I want to get fit, I sort of dive into more of the reasoning what's behind it, so because that's also motivation, which we will be talking about today. I mean, you could argue that you seem to make them healthier through and through, is that, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Because there was a problem, well, I say problem, maybe I'm not wrong, uh, where people used to look in the mirror and it only matters what was in the mirror. But nowadays we understand more about protein, the carb intake. Uh, it's a proper science to it, isn't it? You just don't tell someone to go for a run. You know everything about what goes in, what comes out, and how your body should function. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they go hand in hand, and this is something we know nowadays more than ever, and the public knows that as well. Okay, tell us how many clients can you have, can you have in a personal trainer? How many have you got? Well, I only work with, because it's one-to-one, -one, I have limited time. I've got around 20 clients, which I can see on a daily basis, but yeah, that's how I work. And then I've got an online presence where I then reach out to more people. Yeah, I mean, the online presence has made me sit up and take notice of you, the Mark, uh, the Mark dress and that on, online that I've seen. A couple of pictures, you're looking healthy yourself, well done, Mark. Uh, but tell us about your YouTube and your Instagram. People are very interested, aren't they? What's happened? Did you expect it to blow up the way it has? Well, what happened, and this is quite interesting, is that I got emails from people because of the online presence. People can now search for, let's say, how to get healthy, how to lose weight, and so on and so forth. So they might come onto my website, but they are maybe based in Asia or USA or somewhere. So they can't see me personally face to face. And therefore, I started or I decided to create videos on YouTube to give advice. And that's what really took off. Okay, great. I mean, what's your, what's your example then? Uh, if for someone who is interested in starting exercise, you know, someone who I described at the start of this break, who just wants to go on the couch on the weekend, what's your advice? Because it, that must be the, the biggest challenge, just getting started. Absolutely. I mean, getting started, and this is, it always comes to down to motivation. So when people walk through the door and they see me first time, the first question I always ask is, why are you here? 
because if you don't know why you're here, if you don't have an intrinsic motivation, then I extrinsically can't motivate you, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? So you've got to want it yourself. What about the argument for someone who needs to do it for help? So they don't want to do it. The doctor's told them. Any advice for someone like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, then if you go to the doctor and that is sadly sort of the last stage when people then realize, oh my God, I have to do something and then there is not that much option, but that can be a motivation as well. So if the doctor says you need to do something, otherwise you're going to die 10 years earlier, everyone's going to get out of the couch, stop drinking, stop eating chips and going to come and see me. Cool. And I believe, well, I was looking at your Twitter earlier, if you fall off the wagon, if you don't go one day to the gym, if you don't have uh, the motivation one day, What's your advice? You've got an interesting thing. If you fall off the wagon, it's just get back on the next day, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think the problem is we take stuff then too serious. When Once people get into the fitness thing, they sort of start preaching it like religion. And that's also not the way forward because if you overdo something, it's also not good. So that's why I say if you fall off the wagon, if you had a pizza or something, don't beat yourself up. You know, next day, just stick back to what you know and what you've been doing. But don't start counting the calories and, you know, get getting all, all messed up. Now, you know the science to it, Mark, you know, uh, you know the ins and outs, but yes. then you deal with VIPs, your trained CEOs, politicians, celebrities, because you're so good at it. What about someone who's not that? What's your advice? I mean, is it easy to do so long as you're dedicated? Yeah, I mean, what I often hear is they say, Mark, I can't afford you, I can't pay for someone like you, and I would mm. like to. And that's why I created sort of the free advice on YouTube, because it's free. You know, you can just watch it and yeah. you can search for stuff. Yeah. That's that's sort of the, the way forward. And to be fair, everything is freely available on the internet. But what I've found and why people land on my side is because they feel that I've got sort of the trust and sort of backing up with my, I've got a sports science degree from, from the best university in Germany five years study behind me so there's something which is solid and gives sort of people trust and hope when they when they watch my videos you're sitting at home now and you are thinking all right maybe i'll try now how about you go for a walk at lunchtime and then kick it all off you can go and follow him on twitter my address and the name go and find his youtube channel it's an interesting one you can give him a google it's all right there go and do it for free hey mark thank you so much for your time this morning thank you as well take care take care uh mark Dresden, you should <laughs> That was funny, guys. I didn't expect that. But, you know, I just want to mention something. And this is really interesting because um, when you do these interviews and you've just heard me do one, I try to, you'd never know what, what question comes. So you want to make sure that you answer the question as shortly as possible. So you might have seen me answer the question, try to concisely end it so he can ask the next question. I'm not sure if I managed to do that you know, the, be the best way I could have probably had better answers if I had more time to think about them. But as of now, I just want to give you guys the opportunity to see what happens in a live call because most of the time what you see is when people then cut everything and everything looks nice and, you know, I'm not thinking. I'm like, eh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, this was an experiment on my channel as well. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see. Okay, so to wrap it up, you've seen a bit of a change on my channel. I've tried to create some more videos, workout related videos, and just give me sort of a hint if you like that stuff. Leave a comment in this video, leave a like button, leave, leave a like button here, create a like button and punch in my face or something like that. I don't know. You know the drill. I'll see you in the next video.